Welcome to Living from the Heart. I am your host, Tina Thrussell, also known as Light Dancer, co-founder of Best You Can Be and messenger of the Shindao, the way of the heart. This live show celebrates living with purpose and passion. We explore the ways that living from your heart can amplify the joy and the sense of fulfillment in your life. Living from your heart means living with love, loving who you are, and what you're doing with your life. Living from your heart means feeling alive. Our intent for this show is to inspire you with our stories, knowledge, and wisdom to live a richer, fuller life. So what is the Shin Dao, the way of the heart? The way of the heart is living with love and kindness and compassion for yourself as much as for everyone else. For if you can't have that love, kindness, and compassion for yourself, then you truly can't have it for anyone else. And today's show is a focus on this concept of self-compassion. How does self-compassion impact living a purposeful, passionate life? Let's say that self-compassion begins with self-awareness. You must be aware of yourself, your thinking, the things that you say to yourself, the, the words that you use with yourself, the way you are with yourself. How can you be passionate about life when you're always down on yourself? And that's what a lot of us tend to do. We beat ourselves up. We see our faults. Oh, how did I do that? I'm so stupid. Or what's the matter with me? I know better than that. Or you name it. There are all those types of negative voices that show up in our head and and they actually stem from the voices we heard outside of ourselves as children and adopted those voices as our own there is no way that beating yourself up motivates you to be a better version of you it only cuts you down eats away your sense of value and worth your sense of value as a person. Self-compassion is about treating yourself as well as you would treat your best friend. And I dare say it's about treating yourself even better than you would treat your best friend. Would you tell your best friend they were stupid or that that was a dumb thing to do in a harsh tone the way you would often speak to yourself? Not likely. Self-compassion is connected to mindfulness. This process of being fully present in the moment in non-judgmental awareness. So being aware of what you're saying, being aware of what you're doing, and doing your best not to judge that. Just go, whoops, okay, there it was, I did that, and I can do better next time or acknowledging how much it hurts to have made that mistake or done that thing that seemed to have a stupid outcome. I know that I spent most of my life, most of my life, let's be honest, more than 50 years of my life being really hard on myself. The negative self-talk in my head far outweighed the positive self-talk. I remember a valuable exercise I did many, many years ago that set me on the path of becoming aware of what's going on in my head. One of my teachers suggested that I carry a little notebook and pull it out and write down every negative thought I had, every negative word I said to myself, and just watch how that notebook fills up. It was suggested that we do this exercise for a whole week, but it didn't take more than half a day to see how much of my time and energy was spent picking away at my faults and what I didn't do well. 
it was not motivating. It did eat away at my self-confidence. I felt small and and unworthy and valueless that I had nothing to contribute to the world, which is so far from the truth. I and you and everyone on this planet has so much to contribute to the world. That's part of what the Shindao is about. Loving who you are and loving what you do with your life. Coming to that place of understanding that you have unique talents and gifts, that you are assembled in a way that is unique in the world. And while other people may be good at the things that you're good at, no one's good at them in exactly the way you're good at them. And no one adds their own sense of, your own sense of flair to what they do. For your sense of flair is unique to you. The love you bring to the world, the gifts, the talents that you bring to the world are uniquely yours. And being self-compassionate helps you see and honor and acknowledge that. Probably in reverse, acknowledge that and honor that. Self-compassion is, as I said, noticing those words that you're saying to yourself and going, ouch, that hurt. Wow. And then what you do is you counter that with soft, gentle touch. Wow. Wow. It's going to be okay. You made a mistake and it's going to be okay. You are stronger than you think. You are more intelligent than you give yourself credit for. You are kinder than you think of yourself. These encouraging words in a soft, soothing tone, the gentle touch, it's okay, it's okay, yeah, that hurt, and we can get through this. This type of self-talk, talking to yourself as you would comfort a three-year-old, this is what you want to do. Have that level of compassion for yourself that you would have for a three-year-old that feels hurt and crying. You want to comfort them and encourage them and let them know that everything is all right. Although it may not seem that way, that the circumstances around you may seem like they're against you, everything in the, in the world, everything in your life that happens happens for you, for your learning, for your growth, for your strengthening, for your enjoyment, for your pleasure. Living with a sense of self-compassion, of being kind to yourself, makes it easier to be kind to others. Imagine living in a world full of people who are kind and gentle with one another. Those people have to start by being kind and gentle with themselves. Living with self-compassion does allow you to come to a place of living passionately in your life. The word compassion as divine, uh, divine, ooh, interesting, hmm. defined by <laughs> Zen master Sherry Hubert is calm passion, being in a place of calm observation and having the capacity to have hold passionate space for people to be going through what they're going through, to be without judgment, to simply be in a place of holding space for people to be where they are. It's one of the important key factors in the experiences that we host through Best You Can Be, whether it's the sage within, the spiritual warrior, the sacred journey, whether it's coaching an individual Shindao session. We have compassion for the people in our presence. We hold a calm, passionate space for them to be who they are and go through what they're going through so that they can come out the other side 
in touch with who they are, loving who they are, and loving what they do with their life. And this is what you want to create for yourself every day. Have compassion for yourself. Allow yourself to be where you are. Acknowledge that that is where you are. Feel the pain of it. Feel it through until it passes. And then bolster yourself with those comforting, comforting words and the comforting touch the soothing, murmuring sounds, like when you pet an animal. Hello, oh, yes, I love you. You're so sweet, you know, that I'm, I'm making this motion of petting, calming. And this is, this is the energy that you want for yourself, the energy that you would give to a pet that you love ever so dearly. This is really foreign for a lot of people. And for a lot of people, they're going to balk against this and resist it. Because they were raised with, you got to be tough. you got to be strong. Big boys don't cry. If you fall down, get up again. And yes, that's true. Self-compassion is not contrary to that. It actually just puts you in a place where you're able to do that. But to do that from a place of self-motivation. Think about this. Imagine a young boy who comes home with his report card. His marks are not as great as his parents would like him to have. His father immediately scolds him. What the heck is this? You're capable of doing so much better than this. Look at these grades. Why are you applying yourself? What are you doing? You're sloughing off. You're being lazy. Uh, you're good for nothing. Blah, 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 blah. I want to see you do better. you got to do better than this or you're going to get nowhere in your life. You're going to be a nobody. How inspired and motivated do you think that young boy is? Oh, he might be temporarily. He might be wanting to do better so that he's not yelled at next time or to do better to show his dad. Perhaps. Now, here's another scenario. The young boy comes home from school with a report card with marks that aren't as good as they would like. And the father says, oh, wow, looks like you were having some challenges this time around. Do you think you're capable of better marks than this? Yeah, I think so, too. I think you're capable of doing so much more than this. So what can I do to help you to raise your grades? Can we create space for you where you can study more? Do you need help? What can I do to help you? Wow. Feel the difference in the energy of that. Will that boy feel supported, encouraged, want to do better just because somebody believes he can? Yeah, absolutely. That is far more inspiring, far more motivating. So think of this little boy in his report card scenario and understand that you are both the parent and child for yourself. Are you going to scold yourself in the hopes that it motivates you to do something? Know that that motivation is very short-lived and isn't long-lasting. And in fact, it may not work at all. Or you can be that kind, gentle parent that offers support and encouragement. And you will move so much further in life. You will achieve so much more. And when you can achieve more, then you can step towards living purposefully and doing what you are called to do so that your heart feels fulfilled. That is what living from the heart is about. Living from a place of kindness and gentleness and love. And yes, sometimes that, that does mean you, when you fall down, you need to get up again. And you need that in, internal warrior strength to do that. And that internal warrior strength comes from that place of believing in who you are. And that comes from that place of self-compassion. It's all interconnected, and it feels sometimes a little contrary to how most of us were raised, because that tough love, steel fist 
is what so many of us were raised with. But let me ask you this. How's it working for you so far? <laughs> I know it wasn't working for me. And in all honesty, I don't see it work for anyone that I'm watching, that I'm observing. Those who are loving and kind and compassionate and believe in themselves and draw from their inner warrior strength are those who are successful, are those who are living these passionate, fulfilling lives. People like the guests that are coming up on my show over these next few weeks. Next week, August 7th, my true role model for living from the heart, Sharon Karn, will be on the show with me. And I'm so excited. We both live in Calgary, so she's going to come here to my space. And we're going to be in the same room together and do this recording live. I'm really excited about that. We are going to bring you so much loving energy that you will walk away feeling the love feeling inspired. And the following week, Reverend Cheryl Hines. Oh my goodness, such a fun loving character. Laugh and joke. She'll be in Red Deer, I'll be here in Calgary. So we'll have two cameras, two screens, you'll get to um, be part of our conversations that way. Sandy Dacey will be the week following. And the lineup continues. Amazing, amazing people. Joel Young, Judy Armstrong. Um, oh, my brain is, oh, Jamie Adamchuk. On and on it goes. Every week, a new guest who does live from their heart, who lives passionately and purposefully. In our conversations with each other, we'll share stories, experiences, trusting that that will inspire you to step into this place of living fully from your heart. Until next week, I'm signing off for now and inviting you to invite self-compassion into your life. Namaste. The divine in me sees and honors the divine in you. See you soon. <laughs>